right, Capricorn, it's me, Stormy, and here is your horoscope for June 2018. And Capricorn, we have got a full moon happening in your sign, very close to Saturn, also in your sign this month. That is a beautiful set of energy. I think we end the month on this note where you kind of understand a little bit better who you are. You're representing yourself. You're presenting yourself in a, in a different way, a more mature way, and a way that people are really able to take notice of even people in positions of authority or people who can help make things happen for you. So it's a beautiful energy as we get towards the end of the month. Now, also this month, we have got Mars taking a retrograde. So I'm going to tell you right now, you want to initiate some new things. You want to do it before the 20th of the month. Mars goes retrograde on the 26th of the month in your earned income sector, your house of money, the second house. So initiating some new talent, new skill, new financial situation in terms of how you make money is not going to be the wisest idea as we get into that Mars retrograde. Instead, you want to use that to relook at your strategy. How are you using money? How are you interacting with money? Um, things like that. And I also feel like for you, Capricorn, the question of value and worth really comes up here with the second house. Um, because Mars is going to be retrograde um, in Aquarius, it also makes me think, well, what's the value of who you're spending time with, right? What groups, what associations are you burning yourself out? Out, Capricorn, are you working like crazy? Um, what are you doing here? We have to relook at your action, your energy, your strategy around everything in this second house, and Mars is definitely going to help you get that done. That's a lot. So let's just jump in and start from the beginning of the month because I was kind of working from the end to, to the beginning. <laughs> so here on the 12th of the month, you've got Mercury coming to join Venus here in Cancer, which is your opposite sign. So this is the seventh house. I will tell you this gives you good bodings, good energy, good vibes for um, conversation, relationships. You could be having a conversation about a contract or a commitment or something like that. And this is a wonderful energy to be doing it. I would tell you if you can avoid signing some contracts in the beginning of June that's probably a lot better for you just because uh, Mercury and Neptune are going to be in a square and that can be kind of deceptive in terms of conversation but instead once we get to the 12th Mercury moves on comes over here into Cancer and you actually have the gift of gab you see the details um, it represents very well for you so any kind of chosen partnership contract commitment that you want to make at this point in the month very good now on the 13th of the month we have a new moon happening in Gemini and Gemini is about conversation, communication and movement, right? So we're going to definitely be bringing the attitude of movement to your table. Now this is going to be happening in your sixth house. So if you are a freelance person, you're looking for a job, you're an employer and you need to hire fire people, right? This could be the time that that is happening. Any new breath of fresh air you want to breathe into your health, your fitness, um, your service work, right? Your charity work. Um, I do think too, because this is a new moon and we want to plant those seeds of intention of where we'd like to take this journey. You know, if you've been wanting to bring a small pet or a small animal into your life, this is a wonderful moon to bring that in as well. But what it certainly does being in Gemini is help the conversation around anything work or sixth house related. Now on the same day, we've got Venus moving into Leo. So for Capricorn, this is hits into your eighth house. What this gives me the indication with, we've got the setup, Mercury, Venus up here, excuse me, Mercury at this point, up here in the seven. We've just had a new moon in the six, and now we've got Venus here in the eighth. This is a wonderful opportunity to have conversations, make new connections, relationships, maybe even to delegate some authority um, in business and in life practices. You don't have to have control of everything, okay? Now, the other thing that I think of when I think of this Venus being in Leo, Leo's a very joyful energy. It's also a risk-taking energy. It likes investments. So so being in the eighth house, if you're trying to make an investment in someone, um, you may be a little bit more willing to do that. You may be willing to, even romantically, if this is an intimate romantic kind of risk you're willing to take on somebody, this could be that time that you're, you're wanting to do that. Now, what I think of as a whole, with Venus here in the eighth house, you could have funds, money, beauty, something coming to you from sources that you did not earn the income yourself, right? You could have a partner's money coming your way. Maybe your partner's getting the blessing of some extra coin coming into their pocket or something like that. But remember, 
remember, this is a resource where you didn't earn the money, but it is coming to you, or you didn't earn the value, but it is coming to you. Now, when we get to the 18th of the month, Neptune is going to take a retrograde until November. This is going to be in your third house, and this is what I will tell you, because Neptune is way out here, right? Like, you can't see my hand but you know that I'm doing something, you know, something is happening over here, right? This is what it's like when one of the outer planets goes retrograde. We don't directly feel its effects. However, we know that something's going on. We can kind of feel it bubbling a little bit below the surface, right? Something's happening. And with Neptune, we're looking at spirituality. <clears throat> We're looking at creativity. We're looking at forgiveness, compassion, being in your third house mentally. Who are you renting out space to in your head? You got a resentment? You got some old fling living up here in your head? Let's put some closure on that. Let's put some forgiveness on that. Make space here. Neptune is the most compassionate, forgiving, closing um, energy that we have. It's creative. It's childlike. It walks between those worlds. I think between now and November, Capricorn, this is a wonderful energy that says, is this thing you've got locked up in your head? Is the way that you're communicating and representing yourself, is it true? Is it valuable? Is it serving you? Or is it time to let it go and let some things move forward? So a wonderful energy to keep in mind. Who is renting out space up here? Because they're probably not paying a lot of money. You're renting it for free. And that is not the Capricorn way, right? You got to get your dollar. <laughs> now on the 21st, we've got the sun moving into Capricorn, which is moving into Cancer, which is a very big deal in Western astrology because we don't follow the constellations. We follow the seasons. So this is, again, a brand new breath of fresh air in your direction. We're in a brand new season. It's in Cancer. So this is the seventh house. You could have new relationships coming your way. You could be in a relationship and it gets this breath of fresh air breathed on it. It's needed some vitality. It needs to shine. You need to have people in your corner that are team Capricorn, right? So look for new life to be growing amongst your chosen partnerships. This could also be business partnerships and friendships for sure. On the same day, Venus and Mars are going to reach an annual opposition that they have. Now, Venus is hanging out over here in your eighth house, right? We've got Mars hanging out over here in your second house. So you're going to get what this opposition creates for you is a switch of perspective. It helps you see things differently, okay? Keep that in mind because that's going to be an important swap that happens in this amount of time. And I'm telling you, by the time we arrive even into July, you're going to be looking at thinking about finances, how you're earning, how you're spending a lot differently. And one of the things that I think um, it's gonna bring to your attention, Capricorn, is how poor you are. Now, is this financially you're not doing as well as you'd like to be, or is this time and energy poor? Are you too invested over here in whatever area that is, and you've got to come to a perspective swap? I definitely think that that's something that'll be going on. Now, on the 26th, Mars takes this retrograde here in Aquarius. Again, it's in the second house. You're going to be looking at how you've been interacting with money. Mars says you have to relook at your actions, your strategy, where you're putting your energy. So you are going to relook at that. If you are one of my people who does investments, I would tell you this is a great time to relook over your investments, your portfolios, any of those kinds of things. And also remember, if you're thinking about investing, if you're thinking about launching a new talent, a new business, a new whatever, you have to be mindful that it's going to be very, very slow. It may have difficulties. It may have delays. Um, but ultimately, if you are really taking this retrograde seriously and looking at your energy, how you're spending your energy to make money, I think that this serves you the best, Capricorn. On the 28th, the full moon is in Capricorn, like I said, very nicely um, is snug in the same sign with Saturn there, and you've just got a more mature version of yourself available for the world. It's absolutely beautiful. You know, one of the most beautiful things that we do is grow up because we make space for our, ourselves to be something different in the world, and that is a beautiful, beautiful concept. So um, the other thing that I think that it may do for you, Capricorn, because the full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted, is you may be in a position where your old Old beliefs and your old self from even a year ago are really challenged and you're being asked to grow up here. You're being asked to become the next version of yourself and you might not be doing that as smoothly as you would like to be. So just remember that this full moon is bringing about a change. You've got to grow up to step, step into the next version of your life, which is right here, right? It's right here available to you. Now at the end of the month, 
Mercury's going to move on, move into Leo and be here for quite some time. Now this again puts Mercury here in your eighth house. Wonderful conversation for joint resources, taxes, inheritance, intimacy. If you have something you need to talk about in your, in the depths of your sex life, trauma, whatever it is, Mercury is helping here in this house right now to empower you to be brave, to speak up about something. If something is going on for you or if something rises to the surface and it needs to be able to come out. So really a beautiful month for you. I think it's actually very transformational for you. And because of that Capricorn energy, I just feel like you're going to use this Mars retrograde for what it's really, really good for to relook at the action. How are you achieving? And if it's not achieving, if it's not practical, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. This could be something that you are really relooking at and taking very seriously. So I hope you have a beautiful month. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you in July. Bye.